Shot that hung on the rim for quite a while for Darson Garcia. And we've got a foul the other way. Will also guard multiple positions as well. Don't seem to find him, or maybe he just doesn't uh, work as hard to get open from time to time. Yeah, it's a long way to, to get there to close out on those shooters. They maintained that call. That ball was deflected. They just missed one. And there's a foul underneath again on the Carton Drive, the offensive rebound. This has been a 7 0 run for Marquette. Hook night ends that off the bounce. See, it just looks, it's so easy for him at times. Garcia did get the shot off in real time, so here's Book Knight the other way. And he just lost his dribble. Failed by five. That's what I love about our officials, or the officials in this conference. And our officials in college basketball, really all around, they allow guys to play. And that guy right there, the athleticism. I, I've heard it all about Andre Jackson, can't shoot it really yet, but you know what, his activity is athleticism. Prior to the shot by Carton, as Book Knight got into the passing lane with a pilfer. Whistle didn't get it. Gaffney brings it down the floor, gives it up to Book Knight. Oh, how about the hang time? Book Knight keeping it high. That was a beautiful, beautiful maneuver. Well, Theo John got a piece of this. They're calling a, a goaltend, which yep. is the right call. Buck Knight, little stop and go. Not to be, and it's pulled down by Theo John. Ewan trying to keep it alive, but yet again it's run down by Mark. Cole from Book Knight. Look how, that is, that is how you run a fast break. That's right. how you run a, look at, no messing around. Martin catches in one dribble for Book Knight just to get it, get his bearings, and then RJ Cole. Because we're ready to blow him out of the building. And that's 6'11, stepping out. With nice touch. Book Knight with a jab step maneuver. Drills it. And that was good defense right there. They got to let him play through that, but you're right, Timmy. This little, he keeps the dribble alive. I think that's the difference. The difference in, you know, Kimba's is. More of a his, jab his was off. off the book night. Actually, just a simple handoff. There he is. That's a nice little hand lip job right there. Look, he, he can go either way. I've shown the wherewithal to really step up and get in front of anyone today. There's a bump by Book Knight. Not much of a size difference between those two players. That was rushed a little bit by Garcia. Book Knight over Carton this time. Goes crying off the front iron of the ball. Oh, the teardrop bank is open late. And on Saturday, too. Instead of trying to shoot it straight in. They are attempting to get close, but Elliott couldn't get that one to go. Buck Knight throws up an air ball. And it's just the handle that's so hard to stay in front of. Off the glass, knows he has a little contact coming. Let's throw it a little bit harder, a little higher. He's to, to look at it. As usual, you're <laughs> glass half, half full, I'm half empty. <laughs> yeah. Carton pulls down the rebound. 12 to play. Book Knight off the curl. So plenty of time for Marquette. I mean, it's right there for Sonogo. He was hesitant, and Book Knight tipped it back through. That time, got his line made up. Book Knight in the passing lane. That's a hustle play. And he's fouled by Elliott to go with it. Afternoon. You see those three Connecticut players with four fouls. One of them, Snowgo, their lone big remains. Oh, and rattling at home is Book Knight. It may not make a difference, <laughs> but that is keeping them in the game. Mar Marquette's done a great job in that aspect. Only 10 offensive rebounds for UConn. I say only because they're right around 14 a game. Book Knight lost his dribble. Still managed to get the ball on the 10. I will say when Coach Calhoun did television, people understood what I meant when I said, you couldn't understand what he was saying. Like, what do you mean? It's just that. Man, Gosh. Influenced so many people. Jim Valvano could not stop talking yeah. about D. Rowe. And, sure that yeah. I was shaved, clean cut, because he, he, he would always remind you, you got to look the part, kid. Yeah. That's what you're saying, huh? <laughs> I don't know, Gus. Well, <laughs> thanks to Steve, I was a worthy candidate the following year. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a quick foul. Uh, well.
And uh, as we mentioned earlier, that's, that's not what you want to hear as a player. You want to hear, all right, Biggie's tournament. We got two games left. Biggie's tournament starts. Brand new season where UConn knows how to squeeze the ball. They know how to just take as much air out of it as they can. And a double dribble. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think that ball got deflected. Yeah, I, I think there was a hand on this ball yep. as he picks it up. Did you, you know, it was, I don't know. Full well, court pressure. Quickly up to Book Knight. Oh, subtle slam that time. <laughs> I don't think he had his mind made up on no. what he wanted to do. This to me is just a, a, a forceful lay in. It's not really a dunk. I'm not giving that a dunk status. I'm just saying it's a forceful lay in. Number 10, Simon Torrance, two free throws. Well, that was a. Wonderfully played game by UConn. It was. They knew, talking to Danny Hurley yesterday, this is a must win, and they went out from the start of this game like it was.